going to um, do uh, just a kind of an interview type, um, how have we got to this point of it being your baptism Sunday. Um, and um, Antoinette and Dawn were going to get baptised today, but they've kind of said, can we leave it for a little while? So that's absolutely fine. Um, we will pick that up um, whenever they're ready to do it. But Anna's going to be baptised today. Um, so my first question for you is, um, how or why did you come to the Storehouse Church? By social media. Um, I've got a um, next door neighbour thing. And oh, yeah. it just popped up and it was Alan. Alan's message. <laughs> saying about the... Um, the larder. The larder in the coffee morning. And that's what stuck in. Brilliant. So that got you here. Yeah. Um, uh, and um, how often did you get invited to come to a church service after coming to a tea and coffee morning? Every week. <laughs> Every week. <laughs> <laughs> and how long did it take you to take us up on that offer? A few months. <laughs> a few months. A few months, a few absolutely. Months. Um, and um, we uh, managed to finally get you to a church event that wasn't on um, a Tuesday or a Thursday tea and coffee morning. You came to the Rod Williams... Friday. Uh, outreach event um, and, and what made you say yes to that? Um, since I hear he was a musician yeah. and I thought well, maybe he can do some magic. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and yeah, he was <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. so, to a bit of context with people, Rod Williams is a yeah. Christian evangelist. He's an illusionist. He uses um, tricks to share the gospel in a, in a way that's relevant uh, and um, it was really a, a, a moment that I believe that was significant in the life of this church in the sense that um, we tried outreach events for years and years and years and not had kind of any major success. And something broke that night when he came. We had over 60 people in the room. I cooked for every single one of them. Praise God that none of them had food poisoning afterwards. But that's fine. Alan will testify that I'm a good cook because he loves yes. my cooking. <laughs> yes, he is. But also... Um, that day, 16 people responded to the gospel. And as a result of that, people's lives have been transformed. And you were one of those people that responded to accepting Jesus as your Lord and Saviour. And then as a result of that, you signed up to the Alpha course. And we kind of put the Alpha course on, one as a bit of an outreach tool, but also kind of those foundational blocks for people new to faith or exploring faith. How have you found the Alpha course? Amazing. Amazing. It was amazing. Yeah. 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 It's good to be with lots of friends and family. Uh, I don't know. It's amazing. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm not good in That's words. okay. That's absolutely fine. And then, um, so why do you want to be baptised today? Um, I think I've been lost for a long time. And coming to church, and when first Cheryl gave me a hug and, and everything, and I thought, this is, this is the family I want. Yeah. And you. <laughs> That's you. Yeah, you give the best, the best <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was really nice. Yeah. yeah. And you were, you were sharing with us um, on Thursday, because I got to meet your sister via video call, didn't we? Yeah. Because your sister's saying, why are you getting baptised? Because she can't understand, <laughs> can she? Because she understand a little bit of your history yeah. is that you were brought up in a Catholic family. And so um, she can't kind of comprehend, but you've been telling her and sharing with her yeah. like all the things that Jesus has been doing in your life and the reason why you want to be baptised in obedience to what he's called you to do. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I couldn't believe it that I looked like there was, Anna was in front of me and Anna was on the phone to me. Like they looked so alike. Yeah, we just, yeah, everybody thought we were twins, but we were two and a half years uh, uh, difference. Different. But, when they see in my sister and they say hello to my sister, but they call Anna, <laughs> and I, she accepted she was Anna. And then when they call Zita, I will answer as I was Zita, but I'm Anna. <laughs> so people never knew the difference, yes, even sir. being two and a half years difference. Amazing. Yeah. Um, so the scripture that um, we've got for you today, I know all baptism, her secrets. Absolutely. <laughs> you know all her secrets. So the, the scripture we have for you is this, Psalm 37, verse 4. Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Amen. So we're going to pray for you now, and then we'll pray for you and for me and Rob when we get into the sea a little bit later, that the Lord just kind of gives us a heat wave, a mini heat wave in Weymouth. All right, but let me just pray for you now. Father, I thank you for Anna. Lord, I thank you for her testimony in 
what you have done. And Lord, I thank you, Lord, that she's found a home and a family here. Lord, but most of all, Lord, she's found you. And Lord, I thank you for, uh, Lord, just the work that you've started to do in her, Lord, and you're going to continue to do in her and through her. And Lord, I thank you, Lord, that her hope and her trust is in you and you alone. Lord, we pray, Lord, that you would give her the desires of her heart. Lord, that you would, Father, um, work all things together for good for those that love the Lord. And Father, we pray right now, Lord, your blessing upon her. Lord, as she, uh, in a few moments, Lord, will take, Lord, this step of obedience and faith in you. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the life, Lord, that she has now in you, Lord, that she is a new creation. The old is gone. Lord, the new has come. And Lord, we pray, Lord, that she would... Um, experience everything that you have for her in this new life in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Bless you. you. All right? Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't know, um, I don't know about you, but I love baptisms. (laughs) I absolutely love baptism Sundays. They don't have to be on a Sunday, but it's quite nice that they are. But baptism Sundays are amazing. And you get to see... Oh, I know that's your card from the church. Sorry. That's your card from the church. Bless you. Uh, You get to see what the Lord is doing in people's lives. As um, we were talking and we've gone through the uh, kind of um, Believe and Baptise little book together of Anna and just working through that and I was kind of like how do you want to share your testimony and she's like oh I'm not confident and what if I did it kind of an interview style just asked you a few questions and I sent those questions over to her a few weeks ago so she kind of knew what to expect and so she could prepare a few things but you get to see when you come to a baptism service that Jesus is alive and he's changing people's lives today 2,000 years ago since we've celebrated his death and resurrection and his ascension to heaven, and yet he's still alive, transforming lives, changing lives for his glory. Amen? Amen. So, uh, Romans 6 verse 4 says this, We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death, in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. We have a new life. When we come, when we get baptised, we die to our old self, We die to our old ways and we rise up again in Christ as a new creation and believe God that he's got everything for us that he has in store, that the old has gone, the new has come. And for lots of people, that's like, that's it, isn't it? That's what they need. That's the good news that they need, that actually if they come to Jesus Christ, that the old is gone. Because if we could look back in our lives and think of all the old stuff and all the, (coughs) excuse me, all the old that was in the way, all the old things that dragged us down and held us back. And as Ray so brilliantly said as he led us in communion, is that all we've got to do is accept what Jesus has done for us. All we have to do is accept that the blood has washed us clean, that the blood has washed us whiter than snow, that the old is gone, that the new has come, that those filthy rags of sin and unrighteousness, he now clothes us in glory and righteousness that we do not deserve, we could not earn, and we could not ever make it on our own way. If you look in um, Acts uh, 2, 26 to 40, we see this incredible story. We see Philip the evangelist and he's hearing the word of the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord says, go to this region. The Spirit of the Lord says, the angel of the Lord spoke to him saying, arise, go towards the south along the road which goes down from the Ru- Jerusalem to Gaza. Guess what? When the Holy Spirit leads you, he's going to lead you and direct you accurately. He's going to lead you and direct you in the way you need to go. People that say, oh, I don't know what I'm doing with my life. Well, ask God. (laughs) Ask God, Lord, lead me, direct me. Lead and direct my steps because guess what? When he leads you and directs you, he gives you all the details that you need. This is desert. So he rose and went and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority, And the Candace, the queen of the Ethiopians, who had charge of all her treasury, had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning. And sitting in his chariot, he was reading Isaiah the prophet. Then the spirit said to Philip, go near and overtake his chariot. My boy loves horses. I couldn't catch up with a chariot 
I don't know how Philip did. Obviously, the Spirit led him to run as fast and to overtake the chariot. So Philip ran. We saw Joel how fast he was running today. I think Joel could catch up with a chariot and some horses. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. Interesting, just that he was reading the prophet Isaiah. They were reading it out aloud. Just a really good hint and tip. If you're reading God's word and you have the opportunity, read it out aloud. Read it out. Declare it in your room. Declare it where you're reading. Declare it wherever you are because we often skip when we're reading in our heads. We skip because our brain does this amazing thing because we can see the words and it knows and we miss it. Just read it out aloud. Read God's word out aloud. Let it penetrate where you are. Let it verberate across the room that actually God's word is going out and declaring what God's word says it will do. Do you understand the reading? And he said, how can I, unless someone guides me, and asked Philip to come up and sit with him. The place in the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and a lamb before its shearer is silent. So he opened not his mouth. And in humiliation, his uh, justice was taken away. Who will declare his generation for his life is taken from the earth? So the eunuch answered Philip and said, I ask you, Of whom does the prophet say this? Of himself or some other man? And Philip opened his mouth and began at the scripture, preach Jesus to him. Now, as they went down the road, they came to some water and the eunuch said, see, here is water. What hinders me from being baptized? Then Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus is the son of God. So he commanded the chariot to stand still and both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water and he baptised them. Now when they came up out of the water, the spirit caught Philip away. So the eunuch saw him no more and he went on his way rejoicing. But Philip was found in Aztos and passing through, he preached all the cities till he came to Caesarea. I hope I don't get taken away from the Lord. I know I'm about to go on my sabbatical. You will see me again. I hope that the Holy Spirit won't whip me up and, and, and leave Rob and Anna standing in, in the sea. But we see that the eunuch responded to the word of God, responded to faith, and he said, what hinders me from being baptised? Absolutely nothing. Baptism is about coming and receiving and believing. And it's that first real public declaration of your faith that Jesus is the one that I'm following. Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. And the old has gone and the new has come and I'm declaring it to everyone. We've just listened to Anna to share her testimony and the reasons why she's been baptised. But we looked at that scripture in Romans 6 earlier on. But if we read Romans 6, 1 to 7, we'll see why it's so important that baptism is part of our lives as believers. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. Why are those who have died to sin? Sorry, we are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know that all of us who were baptised into Christ were baptised into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. For we have been united with him in a death like his. We will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection just like his. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. Hallelujah. That's why baptism is so important. Water baptism by its very nature, it's kind of like your badge of membership into the church of Jesus Christ. Not into our church, not into the AOG, but baptism is just your way of saying, Jesus is the one I'm following. Jesus is my Lord, my Saviour, my Master, and I'm following him. And as his example was set before us, I'm going to follow and be baptised as well. Baptism's amazing because you get to hear and see what God is doing. The baptism of the Lord Jesus Christ is the Lord's example. Jesus didn't have to have a baptism of repentance because he had nothing to repent of. 
because he was sinless. We've just heard it today. His blood, he was a perfect sacrifice, but he led the way. And what did John the Baptist say? He said, I can't baptise you, you need to baptise me. And he said, no, no, I need this baptism. Matthew 3, 13 to 17 says this, Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptised by John. But John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptised by you, do, and you come to me? Jesus replied, let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this, to fulfil all righteousness. Then John consented. <laughs> Imagine having that conversation with Jesus. <laughs> Sorry, Lord, <laughs> I can't baptise you. <laughs> yeah. Do it, okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> then John consented. Uh, and soon as Jesus was baptised, he went up out the water. And at that moment, heaven was opened and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting on him. And when the voice of heaven said, this is my son whom I love and I'm well pleased. So Jesus sets the example. Christ's command to us then is to preach and baptise. To go into the world, preach the good news, baptise in those. So it's implying that baptism is a matter of obedience. In Acts 2, 38, 41 and 42, um, Peter says this. Peter replied, repent and be baptised, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Those who accepted his message were baptised, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. What a mass baptism service that was. Yes, Lord, one day we will get there. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and breaking of bread and to prayer. The doctrinal implications of baptism. Baptism is so important to the doctrine and faith of the church. 1 Peter 3, 21 and 22 says this, and this water symbolises baptism that now saves you also, not the removal of dirt from your body, but a pledge of good conscience towards God. It saves you by the resurrection of Jesus Christ who has gone into heaven and is at God's right hand with angels, authorities and powers and submission to him. There's nothing super spiritual about this experience, okay? There's nothing about where the waters are, who prayed over the waters, about the holy water or unholy water. It's nothing about that. It's the symbol that it represents, that our lives are dead to Christ. And then we rise back up, we rise in his resurrection, that new life that comes. You could have people that have been baptised in a bathroom. You have people that are baptised in a prison cell. You've got people that are baptised in a wheelie bin. You've got people that are baptised in the, in, in, the, in the Jordan River or the Sea of Galilee. It doesn't matter where they get baptised, as long as they get baptised. As long as they give their lives to Jesus. As long as they say, Lord, I'm following after you. I want to be obedient to you. So baptism is an act of obedience to the command of our Lord Jesus. It's following in his example of our Lord Jesus, who himself was publicly baptised. That's why I like doing it outside, because it's kind of biblical, isn't it? It's outside so people can see. Um, I had the Indian um, church who meet in our building um, come and speak to me a couple of weeks ago, and they were like, oh, we want to do a baptism service, oh, can we do it in the summer? I'm like, no because I'm on sabbatical and I'm not getting the pool set up for you in a sense because it'll mean more work for people just helping covering the church but I said we're going out to do it in the sea in a couple of weeks we've got a baptism service and he was like oh I'm not sure about that I'm like but that's where God wants us to do it so the whole world can see so everyone who's going to be around Lodmore by Green Hill in a couple of hours they're going to see Anna get baptised what a public demonstration of our faith. Baptism is like a pledge of allegiance to Jesus. Jesus, I'm following after you. The world behind me, the cross before me, Jesus, my, my eyes and my gaze are fixed on you. And baptism is correctly thought of as an outward sign of an inward spiritual change. You're recognising what Jesus has done in your life. When you sang it in that beautiful song that Ray so brilliantly led us in, that what's happened inside of me has changed because of the blood, because of Jesus. And it follows regeneration and shows that the candidate is looking forward to a new beginning and a new start in life. So when we get down to Weymouth, we're going to get into the sea. 
and I pray that it's nice and warm. Sandra told us that it is, and so is Claire, said that it's lovely and warm. And I'm going to say this to Anna. I'm going to say, Anna, do you make confession of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ? And she'll respond, yes, I do. <laughs> because it'll be lovely, lovely and cold. And then I'll say, on the confession of your faith and in your commitment to our Lord Jesus Christ, I baptise you in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. And me and Rob will dunk her down and bring her back up. And then we'll have a massive praise party because God is amazing. Baptism is carried out in one full immersion of each candidate. It's not a sprinkling. It's not a dip in. It's as Jesus was, fully dying to self, rising up in Jesus Christ. That's what it's all about. Baptism in water is a beautiful thing. It's a wonderful commitment and it's experience and it's a step of obedience to Jesus and it's saying, Lord, I'm putting my hope and my trust and my faith in you. As we were talking about Alpha and just mentioned that with Anna, the way that we've done the Alpha videos in this sequence has just fallen perfectly in every kind of week that we did a video that it kind of was relevant to topics, wasn't it? I didn't plan it that way. I just kind of... Myself and Adam were kind of looking at how the structure was and we were putting the dates in. But even on Thursday, we were looking about baptism and we were talking about baptism. I thought, God, you're so good because you're talking all the way through what we do. We even did one a few weeks ago and we were talking about the D-Day celebrations and it came to be that day. You think, Lord, only you could work it out that the the 12-week structure of Alpha we were going to do and all of these dates would fall in perfectly on that time. As we think of baptism, as we look at baptism, we think, Lord Jesus, we thank you for what you're doing and Lord, will you continue to keep on doing it? I know Alan um, prayed, uh, has been praying a prayer that we would see more baptism in the church and I say yes and amen to that. I'm believing that when we come back from sabbatical that there'll be reports and guess what church, you can baptise people without me being here, okay? (laughs) You, You don't need my permission. If people come to faith and they say, I want to be baptised, then baptise them. Do it. Because that's what it's about. The church growing. You being the ministers and being the people that God's called you to be in ministry. We've already gone through the equipping series. Every single one of you is called and equipped by God for service. So if people come to faith in the next three months and say, what can I do? What must I do to be baptised? Well, as Ray's already said, believe and be baptised. There's nothing else. There's just go through the book buy some little books, go through the teaching, make sure they're a firm candidate and do it. Honestly, because I'd love to see people come to faith in the next three months and they're baptised with what a testimony of God's grace and his goodness over us as a church. Hallelujah. Let it move, let it happen, Lord, that we want to see this place full to capacity. Let this be, Lord, a place where people come and they are not only just baptised in water, but they're baptised in the Spirit too. We want to see that full, full birth, that full new creation that only comes through the blood of Jesus and the Holy Spirit living and indwelling in each and every one of us. As I said last week, I'm praying and believing that our motto will be coming out of my sabbatical, building on the Word, living in the Spirit, reaching people for Jesus. We're going to maintain and keep hold of those firm foundations, that motto that Lydia's granddad, Pastor John Rook, gave us as a church. But it's brilliant, building on the word, living the spirit. If you're a Christian, you know what that is. But reaching people for Jesus, that's what it's all about. Being Bible-based believers, because we need the word of God, church. When you see, you see ministries and you see... Um, other denominations who are walking away and turning their back on the word of God. We will not do that. We need the Holy Spirit and the fruit of the Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit in our lives today because it's not in our own strength that these things can happen. It's only by the Spirit shaping us and moulding us and using us for his glory. And we're reaching people for Jesus. That's what it's all about. That's what our prayer is all about, that all of Dorchester and the surrounding areas will come to know Jesus as Lord and Saviour. That's our prayer. Let's believe. Why can't we believe for 3,000 people to get baptised? We're going to need a bigger building. We're going to need multiple services. But let's believe for it. Pepper's already had a dream. And she's seen a vision of people, busloads, coming down to Weymouth Beach being baptised. 
And I said, Pepper, yes and amen, let's keep on praying and believing for it. Why not? Why can't we believe for what God has done in the early church that he can do it now? Because they were just like us, filled with the Spirit of God, willing to serve him, willing to come and lay down their lives and say, Lord, here I am, send me, here I am, use me. And they saw incredible growth. We're believing and we are seeing, I believe, this incredible growth. And the reason why I'm, just even just during our worship, I'm just thinking, Lord, I'm going to miss this place for three months. I really am. Um, I know I've been joking and I've got my T-shirt on and I'm letting everyone know I'm going on sabbatical. You know that I'm going, but you know that I'm going to be praying for you. But I was really kind of wagging up because I could see that I shared, didn't I, a few weeks ago, those green shoots of growth, these, these little green shoots that are happening, I can see it. And I thought, oh, Lord, do I, do, I, do I go on sabbatical now? I told everyone at the last AGM last year that I'm going. Like, do I really go now? And I just felt this whisper of the Holy Spirit. We talked about when he told Philip where to go, and the Holy Spirit just whispered to me, you need to go, because the next season you're about to step into, you need to be ready for it. Because if you're not, you're going to burn out. And I don't want to burn out to see what God has got in store for us. I want to be fully functioning, ready to go for this next season, this next chapter that God has for each and every one of us. Because each and every one of us is part of this church family, part of our responsibility to step out and go and serve what God has called us to do. This church is only going to grow if men and women who share their faith, will share their faith with other people and say, come and be part of this, what, what God's doing. Let me share to you about what Jesus, guess what happened? What, what did you do on Sunday? I went to church. Oh, wow, anything happened? Oh, yeah. By the way, some prayed for someone. Some God gave me worth for that person. Really? Yeah, let me pray for you. You just don't know these opportunities that God might give you as you step out in faith and serve him and trust him and believe that God is going to move in an incredible and a mighty way. We're going to have some fellowship in a minute, grab a tea or coffee, warm up, maybe you want to warm up a hot water bottle to take with you into the sea, <laughs> to hold on to, to keep yourself warm. And um, we're going we're gonna to pray um, that God would just bless our time. And I want to pray for each and every one of you. As we prayed for Rob earlier on, I just want to pray for you that your eyes will stay fixed on Jesus these next three months. God calls and equips and anoints and appoints men and women in positions of authority, but Jesus is our ultimate authority. Jesus is our chief shepherd. Jesus is the one that we fix our eyes on. Jesus is the one who speaks and we listen and we go because his word says that my sheep hear my voice. And so just in this moment, as we, as we close, as we pray, I would just love us to fix our eyes on him. As we've heard already, that Jesus is still moving and shaping people's lives as we're going to be baptising Anna in a few moments. Actually, our eyes and our gaze and our fix needs to continually always be on Jesus. Father, I pray for each and every one here each and every one, Lord, who will be watching online at some point. Each and every one, Lord, who calls this church, Lord, their church home, and Lord, a part of this family. Lord, I pray, Lord, for them. Lord, as we've prayed for Rob already, Lord, today, Lord, would you bless him and be with him. But Lord, for each and every one as part of this church. Lord, I pray that, Lord, they would be equipped, Lord, for service. Lord, that they would step up and be the men and women you've called them to be, to be part of that body. Lord, to be fully functioning in in Jesus' name. Father, we pray, Lord Jesus, that you would use them for your glory. Father, we pray, Lord Jesus, for them as they go out and outreach on the streets, Lord. Father, as they minister, Lord. Father, throughout their just daily lives, Father, I pray, Lord, that you would start adding to this house Lord, that your kingdom will be built and established here, Lord, we pray. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you will be glorified. Father, we thank you, Lord, for um, this opportunity, Father, for me to have this break, Lord, for Lydia and I to have this sabbatical. Lord, we don't take it lightly, Lord, and I pray, Lord, that you would guide our hearts and guide our steps, Lord, in how you want us to grow and develop, Lord, in the next three months, Lord, I pray. But Father, each and every person here, Lord, we 
lift to you and all we pray. <coughs> Holy Spirit, have your way. Holy Spirit, do what only you can do. Holy Spirit, would you move in this place? And Lord, when I come back, Lord, in October, Lord, I pray, Father, Lord, that we would hit the ground running for what you've called us to do. Father, I pray, Lord, that everyone here, Lord, Father, wouldn't just think that they need to survive in the next three months, but, Lord, that they would thrive and grow and develop and be everything that you've called them to be. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen.